The B-21 was designed for a world where long-range strike missions must survive dense, integrated air defense networks. Since almost everything about the B-21 is classified, what we know is based on educated theories. Every design choice points toward a need for extremely low radar signature while maintaining intercontinental ranges and the ability to carry payloads without compromising stealth. Its engines were designed to make the aircraft vanish. That meant deeply buried inlet ducts and thermal signatures that must remain below detection thresholds. The F-22 was built in a different strategic period. Its role was to seize the skies from enemy fighters and to outrun every threat it encountered. Pratt and Whitney F-119 engines were designed for that singular purpose. They needed extreme thrust and the ability to cruise at supersonic speed without afterburners. Efficiency mattered, but only inside the narrow corridor that air combat required. Both aircraft are fifth-generation platforms, but the demands placed on their engines could not be more different. Inside the F-22, two Pratt & Whitney F-119 engines each deliver roughly 35,000 pounds of thrust with afterburner. This gives the Raptor something almost no other fighter has, Super Cruise near Mach 1.8. It can stay supersonic without relying on fuel-hungry afterburners. This capability is made possible by a combat-optimized bypass ratio and a two-dimensional thrust vectoring nozzle that lets the jet maneuver with impossible precision. These engines are built for acceleration and agility. The B-21 takes the opposite path. It is powered by two non-afterburning engines whose exact model remains classified. Current defense analysis consensus suggests they are likely part of the PW-9000 family that are influenced by adaptive cycle research, such as the XA-100 program. If true, these engines prioritize thermal control and stealth integration above raw thrust output. The Raider will never supercruise or fight within visual range. Its engines are built for endurance and invisibility. So here's the question. If stealth keeps favoring efficiency over brute power, Will 6th generation fighters start looking more like bombers at the engine level? Let us know your insights in the comments below and we'll discuss it at the end of the video. The F-119 engine powering the Raptor is a landmark in fighter propulsion. It uses a low bypass afterburning turbofan architecture, meaning most incoming air passes through the core rather than around it. That's essential for generating high thrust to weight ratios and for producing rapid kinetic energy during acceleration. The afterburner system injects fuel directly into the exhaust stream for bursts of extreme thrust while the nozzle itself expands into a rectangular shape to match the aircraft's stealth geometry. It is also thrust vectoring, so it can direct exhaust up or down to improve pitch control during tight maneuvers. This is seen clearly in F-22 demonstrations, where the aircraft can perform abrupt changes in angle of attack without losing stability. The F-119's pressure ratio, temperature limits, and turbine efficiency allow it to supercruise for long durations. The engine was also carefully shaped internally and externally to reduce radar returns and manage infrared emissions, although stealth levels are not on the scale used for bombers. Every feature serves the fighter mission of maneuverability and fast-changing thrust response. But everything the F-119 excels at is something the B-21's engine needed to avoid. The B-21's exact engine model remains formally undisclosed, but public contracting data and official program statements point toward a new derivative of Pratt & Whitney's PW-9000 family. The goal was to create a core that can switch modes between high thrust and high efficiency conditions. For a bomber, the efficiency mode matters most. By expanding airflow pathways and adjusting internal pressure ratios, adaptive cycle engines can reduce fuel consumption significantly compared to legacy turbofan designs. That translates into fewer refueling points and the ability to operate deeper inside enemy airspace without tanker support. Those advantages are not small. Range directly affects mission survivability. The B-21's engine also needed to be far quieter in multiple signatures. The Raider's S-shaped intake ducts hide the compressor face, while the blended exhaust diffuse heat into the surrounding air. These choices reduce thermal signature and make infrared tracking far more difficult. Unlike the F-22, the B-21 does not use thrust vectoring, afterburners, or high bypass ratios designed for speed. Instead, it uses a moderate bypass ratio tuned for stealth and cooling. The F-22's thermal signature is shaped by the need for speed. Even with stealth measures, its exhaust temperatures are far higher than those of the B-21 because the engine is designed for thrust output. 
During supercruise, the F-119's turbine stages operate at extremely high temperatures and push airflow rapidly through the exhaust stream. Thermal suppression exists but only within limits compatible with extreme thrust density. The B-21, on the other hand, treats heat as a liability. Every degree of excess temperature risks detection by modern infrared search and track systems. This forced Northrop Grumman to bury the engine deep inside the fuselage and stretch the exhaust path to allow cooling before gases exit the trailing edge of the wing. That design significantly reduces the plume temperature compared to exposed fighter engines. The requirement to manage heat heavily influences turbine materials and coatings. The F-119 engine relies on cutting-edge alloys and coatings to withstand the extreme conditions of fighter combat. High-performance metallic alloys, titanium, and advanced ceramic coatings line the turbine and compressor sections to endure the intense heat and stress of supercruise and afterburning operation. Materials like these play a key role in heat dissipation and durability. On the other hand, the B-21's engine utilizes materials engineered primarily for low thermal emission and stealth. Early reports suggest that it likely employs ceramic matrix composites in its core, a material that allows higher operating temperatures and greater thermal efficiency than traditional metals. The B-21's engine also uses lightweight carbon fiber composites in its fan blades and casings, reducing weight and improving resistance to fatigue during long-range missions. The intake of the F-22 is designed for agility. Its fixed geometry inlets use ramps to manage supersonic airflow without relying on complex variable surfaces. This design balances stealth, weight, and high Mach efficiency. At high angles of attack, the intake still feeds stable airflow to the F-119 engines. The B-21's intakes are completely different. They are blended and flush with the upper surface of the wing. They capture airflow with minimal radar reflection, then bend it into an S-shaped duct that hides the engine face. This geometry restricts maximum airflow and limits top speed, but the trade-off is worth it because it prevents radar return spikes. But aren't speed and stealth both important? After discussing intake designs for both aircraft, we want you to make a prediction. With future tech evolving, could we see hybrid systems combining both? We'd love to start a conversation about the future of engine design in the comments below. The F-119 reacts quickly to throttle movements and allows the pilot to shift from idle to afterburner in seconds. That responsiveness helps during missile evasion maneuvers and steep climbs. The engine's fan and compressor stages are balanced around rapid pressure transitions. The B-21's engine is expected to prioritize smooth and predictable throttle changes. Abrupt power shifts create pressure signatures and infrared spikes that could compromise stealth. Its mission profile also involves long, steady cruise segments at high subsonic speed. The Raider does not need to fight its way out because it avoids detection entirely. The F-22's engines are complex and require specialized maintenance crews. Sustainment of the F-119 has been cited in Air Force reports as labor-intensive, but necessary to maintain the Raptor's supercruise and maneuvering capability. The B-21 aims to reverse that trend. Northrop Grumman has repeatedly emphasized maintainability as a design priority. The buried engines and modular components suggest the Raider's power plants are designed for rapid servicing without exposing sensitive surfaces. This reduces maintenance hours per flight hour, a key improvement over older bombers. The F-22's engines have high reliability, but their role exposes them to dynamic stress loads like rapid altitude changes and high G pulls. These factors shape inspection intervals and replacement timelines. The B-21's engines operate within narrower RPM envelopes and gentler thermal cycles, and are expected to have longer service lives. If the Raider uses an adaptive cycle derivative, component fatigue is spread across multiple operating modes, which helps reduce wear. The F-119 shows what happens when you push fighter propulsion to the limit with enormous thrust and unmatched agility while the B-21's engine shows what happens when stealth and survivability outrank speed. Together, these aircraft mark the transition between eras. The F-22 is the peak of air dominance engineering, and the B-21 is the beginning of a new generation of low observable endurance aircraft. About that question from before, efficiency is becoming more crucial, and future fighters might prioritize low-emission, high-endurance engines like bombers but agility and speed will likely still drive the engine design. What do you think?
If you enjoyed this breakdown, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel, and let us know which aircraft comparison you want next.